What is up, everyone? I'm Paxton Elrod. This is Kelsey Wingert, and it is Ball and Play League, Crits Ball, beautiful Jersey City, our warehouse event we created. Kels, how are you doing? We got six teams, 11 games total in this tournament, competing for the right to be crowned the champion. Now, Paxton, one of the more exciting aspects of this tournament is that each team is featuring a player from Major League Cricket. Yep, they are. And these players are from all over the world. Let's find out who they are. Will be team baggage. Jimmy and Jake can't sink any lower than their Blitzball Battle 3 effort. Or really, lack of effort. Joining the known losers is Luke, Jimmy's brother and champion from the Tester League, and Aaron Jones from the U.S. National Team in Major League Cricket's Seattle Orcas. Oh, that's glorious from Aaron Jones. For me, that's the shot of the tournament so far. Love Yous returns behind its fearless leader, Nikki Cass. Dalton Feely, of course, is back as well, and they are joined by Rose Rotation producer Rob Sirocco and former South African international and Texas Super Kings first round pick, Rusty Theron. Bookline Singers will lean on its Blitz and Wiffle Ball star Drew Davis to make a deep run in this tournament. He's joined by a pair of John Boy Media favorites, Jolly Olive and BBD. Their Major League Cricket star is Jazz Karam Maholtra, a member of the U.S. National Team and L.A. Knight Riders. Jazz Karam Maholtra, take a bow! in one of the most astounding displays of batting you could ever imagine. Forgotten Rotten has the biggest slugger in this tournament, Trevor Pluth and his 106 Major League homers. Justin Pinnock makes his warehouse tournament debut for the powerhouse team, while South African all-rounder Calvin Savage joins from the Texas Super Kings. Pinstripe Strong looks to build upon their best tournament in warehouse history in BB3, led by the one and only Joe's McFly. Lou Dab returns as well and looks to be a top contender for MVP. Popular MLB YouTuber Shelfie joins the cause alongside Justin Dill of the Washington Freedom. Finally, We Got Ice is led by their goofy pair of friends, Jack Doyle and Zoe, obviously. Comedian and BBC cricket commenter Atif Nawaz certainly has the right vibe for this team, while Obis Pinar joins the squad from South Africa before his MLC season kicks off with the Washington Freedom. All right, now that we have met these players, let's figure out how we actually play this game. The game is simple. There's two innings, there's two teams, and the most runs scored at the end of the two innings between the two teams wins. Each inning, there's a bowling team and a batting team. The bowling is broken up like this. Each half inning consists of three overs. An over is six good pitches. Good pitches are pitches that hit the strike zone or hit the bat. If it doesn't hit the strike zone or the bat, it's a bad pitch. It does now not count towards your over, and you have to keep going. So six good pitches is one over. Three overs is the half inning. Three pitchers will come in and have an at-bat. That's basically the baseball speak of it. You can't bowl two overs in a row unless you throw all good pitches. That's a little wrinkle that we came up with. Now, on the hitting side, you have two batters going at all times. They are a partnership. The striker, the batter that is being pitched to, he can score runs by hitting the back wall. That's a four if it hits the black wall any way below the home run zone. Above the home run zone is a six, which is the most you can score on one good pitch, six runs. And then you can also score one run or two runs or three runs by putting the ball in play and then running to the other side. You and your partner both have to cross to the other crease, like running bases or pickle if you played that growing up. You can also get a run from the batting team if the bowler throws a bad pitch. So if you have a good eye, you know that's not going to hit, and you take, that's one run, and it doesn't count towards the over. You can also run on that because the ball is mostly always in play. How does the batter get out, you ask? Well, good question. There's three ways you get out. One, you hit the ball in the air and they catch it before it hits the ground. Even if it hits the wall, it can ricochet the ceiling, it can ricochet, but if they catch it before it hits the ground, you are out. You're caught out. The other is being run out. So say you put the ball in play, you and your partner decide you're going to try and run and grab a run. Maybe you try to run back and grab two, you get greedy. If they throw it to the wicket and knock the bails off the wicket, or they hit the square strike zone before that runner crosses into the crease, that runner is out. Also, if the bowler pitches the ball and it goes into the circle in the middle of the strike zone, 
you're out. Even if you foul tip it into the middle, you're out, and you don't get to hit again. Once there are three outs, the half inning concludes, or once 18 good pitches are thrown. There's two ways it can end. Now, you're probably still confused because you're not going to be able to pick up all those rules that quickly, but the biggest and easiest way is if you watch the game, you listen to Darren Sammy, and you listen to Chris Rose, and you look at the score bug as things are happening. I'm going to give you a quick guide to the score bug. In the dead center, you're going to have what you're used to. The two teams playing, how many runs they scored in the first inning, how many they scored in the second, and then the total. That's just like a baseball box score. The numbers are just going to be way bigger. Right to the right of that, you have how many outs in the half inning. You know what that is. You have the top of the first inning at the bottom there. In the middle, you have the overs. Now, there's three per half inning, so it's going to go 0.1 means one ball of the first over. 0.4 would mean four balls have been thrown in the first over. Right here, we have 2.4. That means this is the middle of the third over. There's two left to get to three full overs. You want to find out who's bowling at the moment and what's He up to, go to the right, and you have Atif there, 0.4. So he's bowled four balls of his over. He's conceded six runs and zero outs. Say, oh, what did he do on those four? How did they get their six runs? Well, look down. On the very first one he he bowled, he gave up four runs. Not great. Then a dot ball. That's worth zero. That's great for him. Then one run. That's pretty good for him. Then he threw a bad pitch. That did not hit the bat nor the strike zone, so it's an automatic run for the batting team, and it does not count as his six, so you see a seventh bubble has been added. Then you've got back to dot ball, two more left. On the hitting side, you're going to see the two batsmen that are currently up, the partnership. Lou and Justin are the partnership. Lou has scored 27 runs off of nine balls, and Justin has scored 21 runs off of seven balls, which I think, does Justin have the better rate there? Well, I don't know, maybe. So that's everything you have. You have the two hitters, what they've been up to, the bowler, what he's been up to, and in the middle, what the game's been up to. All right, Kel, so we have met the team. We know how to play the game. Game one, we've got baggage and we got ice. Now, we were both a part of Blitzwall Battle 3, and we saw some incredible storylines with both of these teams during that tournament. I think baggage might be here coming back with a vengeance. Oh, man, when you go back to Blitzwall Battle 3, it ended in a heartbreak for Team Baggage because out of all people, Joe's McFly walk-off hit versus Jimmy O'Brien, and they exit the tournament. But something that's going to be very interesting to see about Team Baggage this year, the reigning champs in the 2022 Tester League mm. included Jimmy's brother, Luke. Yep. They, like I said, were the champions. So Team Baggage, who obviously has a lot of warehouse experience, is adding a guy that they're really hoping has that deep playoff run experience here in the warehouse to help them break that ice. And on top of that, they have Aaron Jones, who, yep. if you don't know anything about cricket, this guy is off offensively reliable. He's the guy you want up there, and he's calm, cool, collected. And you actually got a chance to talk to them, so how about you throw it down to yourself, and let's just make this seem as natural as possible. All righty, we are down here now with Team Baggage as we get ready to go for the first game of this tournament. There's a lot of questions to get you with this whole team, but I want to start with Lewis. Luke, coming from Team Happy to be here, the reigning champs, what do you think that you can help bring to Team Baggage? I think I can bring a lot of experience, a lot of banner-raising experience. Um, I'm a tenured vet in ball and play, which not a lot of people can say. So I hope to bring some confidence and experience to baggage who we're trying to lift out of a little drought. Ten-year bet. Jimmy, is the popped collar going to be um, something that we're going to see from you guys the entire tournament, just before the game, the entire game? It's just for a right now thing. Okay. Uh, I needed something to do. Okay. And uh, you guys' last appearance, I know that you would like for it to be better for the, the um, players who are coming back from team baggage for their second time from the tester league. What difference would you like to see in y'all's game this time around? I want us to have a team identity by the end. Yeah, short. We're all six feet. Luke's kind of blown it a little bit. Lewis. I think we've got two power players, and then we've got two like alphas of the game, and I think you're gonna see that play out on the field. That like when they're up, it's like oh six six six, and when we're up, it's like let's do all right. Hustle and heart. Hustle and heart. Hustle and heart. Hustle and heart. Aaron. I know you've played here before back in October of 2022. What did you learn in your first warehouse experience that you hope carries over into this tournament? 
Um, it was a good experience. Um, obviously, right now we're playing with a different ball. Um, just learning the different rules of the game and just being in a warehouse is different for me, so I'm just happy to be here, to be honest. Different ball, different rules, a new team here and Team Baggage. We're getting ready to go for game one. Are we, is the circle of, circle of fire? <laughs> Thanks, Kels. I'm down here with We Got Ice. You were just down here with Baggage. But you know what? We have some team synergy already. It's feeling cool. It's feeling confident. Jack, since you're standing next to me, how are you guys feeling since you were literally just thrown together uh, last minute? This team, it feels like we're forged in a fire. Mm. Okay. And I don't think we're going to lose a single game. Okay. And if, we want, if you want, we can play a random game. Who's the pro here? If the audience wants to guess at home. Cricket I mean, player. Which one of us for? Yeah. We're all this. I mean, it's <laughs> uniform. We're almost identical. We could be each other's stuntmen. Yeah. So, and ask you a question. Obviously, you've never been a part of anything with John Boy Media. Sure. Is this intimidating, or how are you feeling going into ball and play? No, honestly, I was terrified because I've played cricket my whole life. This is a different beast altogether. I was worried I was going to be a liability, and then I saw these guys, and I felt so much more relaxed. <laughs> Because these guys are winners. They've got champions written all over them. I'm just going to ride on their coattails all the way to the trophy. Very excited. Got it. I thought you were about to throw an insult. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to come down to you. Obviously, you're the cricket player. What is your strategy going up against baggage since, I mean, they were also just thrown together as well? Yeah, I think it's just understanding the game, first of all. Um, we, we had a bit of warm-ups here, so I think that gives you an idea. But after the first couple of games, we'll, we'll see what we need to be, to be doing. So I want to ask you this too and end on this, that these two guys are a, a lot about goofing and gaffing. How do you think that you fit into that goof and gaff culture? I think perfectly. That, that's the way, we, the way I prefer it. So I think we'll have a lot of fun out there. That well, good luck, guys. We'll talk to you after. And fans, if you're at home watching, don't forget that you can get involved in the action as well. We want to hear your vote. So if you go onto our social pages, it's up right now. That's JM Warehouse underscore. We have polls. You can make your prediction for who you think is going to win the game. But Pax, who do we think is going to win starting with game one? Game one. I got to go baggage for the simple fact that Jimmy and Jake did not do well in Blitzball Battle 3. And I think that they have been here practicing. I think that they also created the game. So it's going to be disappointing if they lose. So I think they're going to win. And I'll play devil's advocate to you because I'll take We Got Ice in game one. I really like the experience that they have. Obviously, Jack and Zoe are extremely experienced in this warehouse, probably more so than anybody else. And then you have Atif, who is a cricket commentator, so he likely understands really the strategy of the game going forward. And then Obis Pinar, he's going to put on a show. That is our Major League Cricket player. So I will take We Got Ice in game one. So we've now gotten you ready. Ooh. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Get yep, we got Chris Rose, we got Darren Sammy in the booth, on the call. Be sure to tune back in at 6 p.m. for game festivities to start. I'm Paxton. This is Kelsey. Bye.